Hey everybody, welcome back to the gardening artist Reba here. So we're out in the garden, we're taking a look at some things. I'm prepping for hopefully, God willing, our move within the next year sometime. Um, I know we just signed our lease for another full year. Our landlords didn't give us the option to do the month by month this time, nor did they give us an option for a six month lease. They said, here's the lease, it's for a year. And if you don't agree to the payment and the year lease, then you must vacate. Let us know when you'll be moving out. <laughs> so I was like, wow, no, no wiggle room. Mind you, we have been renters at this house for six beautiful years. And out of those six years, we have never once not paid our rent on time. It has been on time every single time. And I'm wanting to say we've been here with the first year and a half that we lived here. It was the people who flipped the house and they were our land um, owners. And then the landowners that took over we've had for about so two about one and a half years and then so about four and a half years almost we've had the new land landlords anyways the new landlords literally we've they've pretty much except for the very first year they kept our rent the same price that the previous landowners had and so that was that one year that was not an issue but every single year since then they have upped our rent every time and each time they have increased our rent they have actually increased it um significantly from the last time so it went from being about um a 50 to 75 dollar increase to a hundred dollar increase to now 125 next year bet you anything they'll re increase it almost like probably another um, hundred and maybe fifty dollars more or seventy five a hundred and fifty to hundred and seventy five dollars more I bet you anything that's what we're gonna be getting this fall they like to send out the um, the new lease agreements about six months in advance which is really good so that it gives us some time to think about everything with that being said at this rate um, I mean, I'm complaining a little bit, <laughs> um, clearly, but really um, our rent's very reasonable considering what most people pay in the area around us. So for this size yard and, and everything, um, we really have nothing really truly to complain about when other people are paying far more than us. So um, I do know that the neighbors that live next door to me, I know that they can they pay considerably about 100, probably 150, almost $200 more than we do in rent a month and it's the same landowner so which i think is ridiculous they should just have them both at the same price point especially since they know the neighbors live next to each other and that they're probably going to talk to one another at some point and uh, i think that's really sad um but that you know whatever the landowners can do whatever they want right when it comes to that they can actually probably get way more money than what we're actually paying uh, so I mean it's really not that bad but for our family in our situation it would be far better for us to go ahead and start looking into getting pre-approved for our home loan finally I'm thinking within the next month or so we're probably going to end up going down that route we're already starting to prep we've got a um, uh, spreadsheet made up of uh, rooms that we're going to tackle in the house for downsizing I really wanted to have a yard sale but a part of me really doesn't want to have a yard sale because ugh, this neighborhood and yard sales they just don't match and I'm really kind of sick of doing yard sales and really is it really worth it I mean I might get like a little bit of money but I mean I guess for that little bit I mean it's worth it but really at this point I'm kind of just all oh I'm, I'm pretty much done um, I'm definitely gonna have a plant cell that's different for me than a yard cell um, and I've done pretty well with the plant cells and since it's just things that extra things that I have from taking cuttings and such I feel comfortable and confident in um, in doing the plant cell and just getting rid of my excess at this point so um, let me show you what I've got going on so that's kind of like the the situation here 
um, why I'm sharing uh, what I've done is because primarily the rent price is going up. Um, inflation is going up everywhere though. So um, their taxes for the property are going up. So they kind of have to raise taxes or not taxes, but they kind of do have to raise rent because the taxes are going up for housing and all that. So, I mean, if I was a landowner, I'd probably also raise the rent prices as well, especially when people with, with everything going up, you kind of really need to. Um, but it, it's a kind of a bummer. Anyways, so now I'm prepping. Now we're, we've are we got the timetable set for um, our family, what we're thinking about doing. And now it's time, and now it's go time. Now it's time to start really um, downsizing and getting rid of things and, um, and separating things. So here, I'm gonna just take you through the garden, show you what I've been doing this last week. And, um, and all that great stuff, right? Okay, so right here, we're looking at my citrus trees that I have. These are all in container pots. They're all one gallon. These are doable for moving. I'm gonna show you here in a moment in another part of the garden um, what, what I'm, where I'm putting these, what I'm putting these type of um, things into and um, for the move. And it's gonna make it so much easier. And I may go ahead and put them in there before the move just so I can move them around the garden so much easier. All right, so let's go over this other way. So these are definitely gonna be keepers for um, when we move. So they're all set out like this. I did lose the pink lemonade, um, the Eureka pink lemonade, I'm wanting to say that's what it's called. It's basically a variegated pink um, lemon tree. That one did not survive the cold in the greenhouse. And some of these other ones had a little bit of dieback, but they're still alive. So that's a really good sign to me. This one here, this variegated one did really, really good. I um, only had a couple leaves that died on it, literally only a couple. And it's, it's doing phenomenal, you guys. So I'm really liking that one. And all the other ones did fairly okay. So thumbs up for that. So these are keepers are all in one gallon. So that's really cool. Um, and then coming over this way, I actually um, went through and already divided out all my raspberries and blackberries. And I left some of them in here. And I took from the root section of some of the new growth coming up. And, um, and then I left some of the old, um, parts of them. So all of these are going to be in my plant cell and, um, and I'll show you what, what I did. I've got the blackberries and raspberries that I'm keeping from these ones over in another section of the garden. So anything that's in a smaller container pot, I am definitely going to be, um, keeping for the most part. Some of them I might go ahead and get rid of in my plant cell. Um, but over here, these are all keepers. I've got a, um, smaller, uh, little, um, I forgot the name of it yesterday too, because I tried doing a video yesterday. Um, this one is a, um, honeysuckle and, uh, I've got one of these from the Dollar Tree. They had these little Christmas tree shaped, um, lattices and it's just perfect. I just cut the wire at the bottom or bent it until it snapped. Um, because they are soldered together at the bottom to create the ring and then I just squeeze it and then stick it down in there and it works perfect so um, it's tightly in there this was my first plant here at our um, house and this one is my um, hydrangea I brought that from Colorado with me when we moved out so I've divided it out and I have sold parts of it because it grows a lot so I've already I've already gotten rid of chunks of it in the past just to keep the size down this is uh, another little tree I just think it's really beautiful so I'm definitely want to keep that one and then um so all of these are pretty much keepers in the section this size pot is okay um these will these trees will get put into the ground at some point so I cannot wait for that anyways let's come over here so this is um some of the bigger pots that I'm planning on keeping um this is one of the trees that I grew from seed right here I have it in a um a spellier um style or spellier however you want to pronounce it um configuration basically and so um this one's going to be one that we take with us so I have a couple pots that are going to be bigger ones and um and then I'm going to reutilize this smaller um, pot for this other one that I grew from seed right over here. And so um, this one's going to be potted down into that other one because this pot's just too big. And um, 
I really don't want to move giant pots. I really kind of want to like limit all that. I do need to get this taken care of within the week and get it potted down because it is getting ready to leaf out and I don't want to mess with it too much once it starts um, fully leafing out. Um, so I want to get that g done. Um, here's another one of the ones I'm going to be taking with me and this is my um, my apricot tree. It's called the gold cot. It is amazing. As well as my cornelian cherries. I'll definitely be taking the cornelian cherries with me. So I'm trying to get away from the bigger pots. The other um, size pot that I'm going to take are the, the ones that are in the purples. So all of these ones here, these are my favorite blueberries um, in the bigger pots. And then these other pots are smaller blueberries and they really don't, they're really not going to take up that much room. And so I'm thinking I might go ahead and take those two. And, um, but who knows, in the next couple months I might go ahead and change my mind on that. Um, so anyways, coming over this other way. So this little section right here is a group of um, plants that I'm going to be parting with because I'm always, I can always get more, um, uh, I'm forgetting the name of it, <laughs> this style here. These, um, they're really popular here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, my brain is not working. Y'all can help me out on that one. Um, so ever since I got the big bad vid, I have noticed that um, I blink even more on names of things. And so I do apologize. Um, so anyways, this is a grouping of things that I'm gonna go ahead and part with. Um, I have grown the Ivan's Beating Mountain Ash for a few years now. And while um, I think it's such a beautiful tree and everything, I really don't like the, the taste of the fruit. So, um, and I've, I've given it a chance for a few years now and I'm just not really a fan. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna be parting with that. And then this is a little grouping of plants that I'm gonna keep. I'm not keeping the big black um, pots of um, soil. Those actually I've just placed there so my trees don't fall over, <laughs> to be completely honest. So I have um, my Honeycrisp, my Montmorency Sour Cherry um, in the purple pots here. And then um, this one here is another apple tree that I'm going to be keeping. It's not in a purple pot, but the pot is about the same size. And um, it's a little bit smaller um, in uh, diameter. So I'm going to be keeping this apple tree as well. And then I, wait, no, this isn't apple tree. This is actually my um, my plum tree that I got. Um, it said it was a um, peach plum, but it's not. I had figured out what kind of plum it was last year. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a green gauge, but I think it's more, I think it's an emerald um, something. Uh, it's from Dave Wilson Nursery. It's such a delicious plum. So it's getting, actually, it's got some blooms getting ready to open up. I don't know how many plums I'm going to get on it this year, but um, it's pretty, it's, it was pretty laden with uh, fruit last year and the fruit was so, so, so good. So I'm definitely going to keep it even though it was mislabeled. Such a good, such a good plum. Flavor was so good. I'm, I just imagine the, the jam from this is going to be amazing. And so here's my other apple tree. I'm going to be keeping this one as well. And I got it down potted into a um, purple pot right here in the top of these. These are all from my blackberries and raspberries. So these are all ready to go. And I just cannot wait to go ahead and um, just keep them um, situated like this. I kind of want to keep them um, in a container of some sort and I'll show you those again I already mentioned them how I want to like kind of contain everything um, just for watering purposes for the next year so um, some of them I have the these are those white blackberries I did not care for the flavor last year but in all fairness I did have um, the big bad vid last year and it really messed with my um, my sense of smell and my sense of taste um, I'm just now actually being able to taste the garlic truly how I remember it about 13 months after the fact okay so um, I'm gonna go ahead and give them another shot this year I have them down potted into these one gallon container pots so I will see how they taste this year um, I did send my sister the ones from Baker Creek um, uh, seed company I sent those with her I think I might have had a couple smaller ones um, that I saved from that 
with my other plants. So I don't know. I can't remember. Um, if I do have them, they're probably in this one here. Um, but I can't remember. But anyways, I've got them all down potted into some solo cups for the move. I know it's a little bit early, a little bit um, uh, in, far in advance, but we don't know if we might end up having to break the lease. And so if that's the case, we might have to just do a payout, see if our landlords would be willing to do a, a payout for us to break the lease. Hey, how about you keep our, um, <laughs> our deposit <laughs> from, uh, you know, when uh, we, we moved in here <laughs> and then... But yeah, they'll they'll want that's why they trap you into these leases so that they can uh, collect rent free for basically a whole year, even though they'll have somebody in the house within less than a month. Anyways, so I've got these little um, crates that I've picked up at Walmart over the years for my kids to put um, things into. Anyways, the kids really aren't using them anymore, and so I've decided to go ahead and utilize them out here in the garden. I actually can fit four. Um, for the one gallon containers into these and they have the little handle so I can pick them up and move them around the garden which is really brilliant so um, that's what I'm thinking is I'm going to be using all the ones that I have right now to put things into and then another thing that I have are these little shopping crates which you can pick up for around eight dollars or whatever and um, I can fit about six one gallon containers in them. Again, they have handles so that you can move them. These are gonna be ones that I take with me. I've got my apple trees that I grew from seed in them and some of the cherry trees that I grew from seed and the one from the tree that was in the far back, which is no longer there because they came through and completely took everything out. Now my neighbors had originally told me that they were gonna be putting in a trailer park for like living but they had actually heard incorrectly so it's actually gonna be um, a place where they sell like trailer beds so they're just expanding the business which makes more sense because that's what we see all the time from the yard now <laughs> so there's they're expanding back so they're just expanding their business Anyway, so getting ready for the move, getting ready for everything. I've also gone through and right here, I have all of my elderberries. And this is what I did yesterday is I came through and I separated out um, my elderberries. And um, some of them don't have anything left because I was able to separate out an entire plant um, into the solo cups. So now I've got my elderberries I'm gonna keep into the solo cups as well. And um, I'm thinking, like you saw the blackberries and the raspberries over there, how I had them all like tight together. It's going to make it really good for watering. Not only that, using something like this right here with the little carry crates, I'm thinking that'll be ideal. It'll keep everything together and tight so that they're not falling over. And I'm going to do blackberries in one and I'm going to do um, my blackberries and raspberries in one. And in another one, I'm going to do my um, elderberries and such. And if I have a little run over of one or the other, they'll just occupy the same tray as something else. So we'll see how many I can fit into something like this. I will need to pick up a couple of those, pop those in there. And then that way I have them where I need them. And I, it'll make it nice because the bottoms are solid. So the grass won't grow up. I don't have to do any weeding, which is really nice. And just move them around for mowing the lawn. So I'm super excited about all that. Um, over here, I have uh, the, the planter um, stands from when I had had my greenhouse. And they're working out great. I do need some new like connectors. I might be able to get something like that at Home Depot possibly. And um, maybe some metal connectors would be nice or even new plastic. Although I think I can get new plastic connectors online. I think I did find something on Amazon and that might actually be cheaper and they'll actually fit. But all these plants over here, for the most part, that are on these containers, these are all going to be ones that leave in my plant cell because I don't need the extras. Um, and then I've got my established Swiss chard that I'll go ahead and go with me because it's small enough. And um, here's another one of the containers I'll be taking with me. This has got my um, 
I can probably, I might be able to pot it down, but I don't know if I want to mess with the root system, but this is my artichokes. So, um, it looks like only one survived, but we'll see what happens once spring kicks in. We'll see if any new pups come on the older uh, roots that are in the pot. And then I may or may not um, part with my herb containers. I do really like the containers. I've had them for six years now and, um, uh, they're they're good and all that's pretty a long that's kind of a long time to have a container pot to be completely honest um and i did find out where the other two that go on this one here and this one over here, they're in the greenhouse <laughs> and um let's come over here real quick and then we'll go into the greenhouse and hopefully i have enough battery space left on my phone to be able to record but over here i took cuttings from all of my um the wind is blowing i apologize i took cuttings from all of my um uh, currants and josta berries and and then the, I made sure I potted up months ago I repotted up a lot of the um, gooseberries that I had down here so these are going to be all things that go in my plant cell um, and then this one this bigger one this bigger pot it's not too huge it's a medium size um, this one is going to be my um, my catch-all it's got like every variety of um, gooseberry not gooseberry every variety of um currant and josta berry and that sort of thing that i have so that's that pot this is going to be the pot that i keep and i'll be able to let go of all of my one gallons that i have over here because i have all of my plants contained in this one and i have them all marked as well so i'll know what variety i have so that will actually that's actually going to be way less um taking up way less space than a whole bunch of little one gallons so that'll be good I'm probably gonna go ahead and sell off um, this container in my plant cell as well. It's got a josta berry on it. And since I have cuttings of the josta berry in um, a couple different areas, I'm gonna go ahead and um, keep those ones and, um, and let go of the other ones. So yeah, and I might go ahead and separate the, out the other two um, currants that I have in this one and then do the whole, you know, put them into a little one gallon to, to get rid of as well, just so that I can make a little extra money. Now this pot here, this is actually um, some more of the um, Cornelian cherries. This one is a keeper as well. And then I've got some random things on here, which are gonna be keepers on my stand. Um, I might pot some new things and I've got mint growing in these. So those are definitely keepers and they're smaller. Um, let's go over into the greenhouse and check out what's going on in here. Um, I am air layering you guys um, on the fig trees because I am not going to be moving with all of the bigger fig trees. And I am definitely needing to um, have them in smaller containers. One gallon or smaller for the move. And the same watering principle of putting them into a contained tray. I do have some of those little trays that you see at nurseries. I might actually be able to use those to my advantage. So I'm, my solo cups might end up going in those. Um, then I won't have to purchase anything. I forgot I had those out in the garden shed. Anyways, um, I do have these little balls. These are for air layering. I got them on Amazon. And um, my fig trees are starting to wake up. And so I do need to get my um, all of my little um, air layering sections onto the fig trees. Now, all of the bigger container pots that have one or more fig trees in them are containers that I, or fig trees that I wanted to keep. And I planted them all together for that very reason of wanting to keep them. But however, my brain is like, you know what? That's a lot of soil. That's pretty heavy. Let's Let's think smarter and let's, make them make the plant get some plants that are a little bit smaller for the move so that's what we're doing so i'm air layering out getting some roots established and hope hopefully god willing within the next month the majority of the fig trees that i have the air layers on will have set roots and i'll be able to um, pop them into um, a smaller container so that is the idea um this little improve meyer lemon took a beating in the cold this one i'm not going to be keeping i'm hoping that it'll push out some new leaves um by may and if it does it's going in my my plant cell for sure 
Um, this one here, I'm going to wait for it to push out more. Um, I just saw Roots and Refu Refuge. They did a video and her pineapple sage um, wilted in their frost. And um, here you can see it comes back from the roots. I had a lot of the leaves die off in the greenhouse here but they come back every year from the roots. I've been growing pineapple sage for about, I'm wanting to say four to five years. And uh, every year it comes back from the roots. So all I did was cut off the old growth from last year that I had overwintered last winter because I did an experiment. All the leaves died because of the cold, but um, they are they are frost. Um, they, they don't do good with frost, but the roots um, are very, very well protected. And the plants will come back from underneath the ground, which is great. So I'm going to wait for them to come up and get taller. And then I'm going to take cuttings and root them into some smaller container pots for the move. And this will go in my, um, my yard cell. Um, in fact, I could probably take one plant out of this and sell the entire um, thing in the yard, yard cell, or not yard cell, plant cell that I'm going to have. So, um, that is the plan, you guys. That is what I'm going to be doing. My giant chili and guava that I have, that's going to be going because I have this one here that's in a smaller container, which I'm going to keep. And I'm going to sell the bigger one because I don't need to have it. And, um, for the most part, once I get everything, um, air layered and sized down, anything that's in a one gallon pot or smaller, for the most part, I am going to be um, keeping anything in the bigger pots. I'm going to be definitely selling off and or separating out because some of them are like three in a pot and um, I'm not going to sell all three in one pot. So I'll probably separate them out and move them into another container for um, the plant cell. Um, but I'm going to wait till after the air layers are done because I don't want to disturb the roots right now. And um, then once I have all that done, my greenhouse will be quite sparse, um, I would wager to say. And I'm not fo focusing on um, a lot of fruit this year. I'm definitely focusing on getting those air layers done and preparing for this move, um, which I'm pretty sure is going to be happening. Um, but anyways... I'm super excited. I'm definitely keeping all my roses. Um, most of them are in smaller containers. And then of course, there's a few pots that are um, bigger that you saw out in the garden. But for the most part, um, I think I only have like 13 of the purple size pots. And um, then there's only a couple other ones that are really big. Like um, I have three green ones I wanted to say, and then um, and then there's just a couple other little black ones here and there for the most part. Um, I think I only have three black ones that are, um, that are kind of like the purple size and the green in between the purple and the green size, um, that I had picked up at Walmart. And so those will be the only, the only, like the green and the black one that I have. Let me show, I'll go show you. Um, those ones I'm going to be, um, <laughs> those ones I'm going to be keeping. So I have my Lebanon cedar in one of those black ones that I was talking about. That one is a keeper. So I really only have a th like three of this black size that I'm keeping. Three of the green size that I have the, um, my, <laughs> my brain just froze that I have that on over here. Um, I only have three of these this size. And so, and then I have 13 of the, um, of the purple pots. And then the most part, most of everything else is in one gallon, um, to 10 gallon sizes, which are very reasonable, um, for the most part. Anyways, I do my, um, my Ukraine high bush cranberry over here is a keeper as well. That's in a, um, pot that I got from my friend. And um, it's a little bit bigger, but it's not as big as the um, the purple ones fully, and is easily to easily to move. So 